And his brother's name is Ed. So he comes to visit. And there's another day that used to sit here and move for Mark. Yep. I mean your brother. Yeah. Ed Edward Ed Big Ed. Uh I was well not. Do you do you want that to be on?
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to see you all. Um, so, a couple of announcements. Um, so, we have uh, this uh, right here the summer events, all big from April to what, August? Um, yeah, yep. April, August. If you want to get one of those, put on your fridge um, for summer events. Um, we're trying to push summer a little bit more here. <laughs> and then a couple of the announcements uh, NECA box downstairs. Actually, the box is not there. Hey, Andrew took it over and didn't bring the box back. But that's okay. We'll try to fill it up with food when we do get the box back. Uh, board meeting today after services around 12.30. If anyone wants to come join us, that would be great. Bible study this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Um, and then the following Tuesday, which is the last Tuesday of the month, at 5.30 we have the movie The Chosen that we're watching. Uh, uh, not season, but... Season 1, episode 3. Yeah, episode 3. Okay. If anybody wants to catch up, we do have a DVD if you want that, or it's on uh, Peacock for free. Well, you have to pay for PJ. Um, Hannah potato dinner coming up next Saturday. Yeah, this it's, Saturday. Oh, this Saturday. That's right. Because Sunday's the first day of the week. Um, see Katie. No, see. No, nope, see Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do the announcements? <laughs> uh, Shelly, uh, if if you are interested in just giving money or making a dessert, and uh, it's going to be twelve dollars since everything else is going up, might as well go up with the twelve dollars. Uh, so it's a good meal and uh, ham and ham and right. potato. Dip. I yes. need somebody to peel and dice fifteen pounds of carrot. Andrew's really good at that. Oh, I think she's gonna see it. I love doing that. If, if you get the carrots, I'll do it. I love it. Okay. Okay. Volunteer. Yep. That's what that is. Um, it's time to start collecting candy and for plastic egg for Easter egg hunt. Um, Pre-filled eggs would be amazing. Um, so it'll be one o'clock after Sunday service, uh, and we invited the community. So um, we're hopefully we'll have a big turnout there. Um, and then if you want a uh, meat raffle for Sons of American Legion, I have those too. So that's going on as well. Any other? I say that because Sons of American Legion is helping with the church with doing projects in the community. So it's somewhere part of the church. But it's, it's a good program. Any other announcements? Oh, and if you're interested in helping Katie and Andrew um, to teach junior church, um, April's coming up soon, so if you want to take a whole month, we'll train you. We just need somebody to teach the kids. We've got uh, April May covered already. Oh, we've got April May covered, so we're looking for June. Okay, so if you're interested in working downstairs with the kids in June, that would be great. Oh, good, I didn't know that. Well, that's a blessing. All right, let's read scripture together. I'll start where the dots are. Everybody read together. What then shall we say? When you come together, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Are there any prayer requests? I have a few. Okay. Here. Um, the school nurse in Stewart's County Community School has been diagnosed with breast cancer, began with an aneurysm, and she's waiting as we speak to go to the outside. And what's her first name? Fire. What's that? Uh, fire. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yes, sir? My granddaughter, Trinity, she's home, but she's serving. Yes. Okay. God knows. Yes. Um, just keep praying for our co-worker Patty. She's also has breast cancer and is in other places too. I need that word. Chance for mm. Anything else? Andrew? Keep praying for Marsha. Andrew yeah. Jackie. Yep. Oh, yes. Court? Oh, pray for 
Bruce's daughter uh, has some issues going on. Jean Carroll also, she fell last week and broke some bones and she's bruised. Um, also pray for Karen Liu. Um, also one of my kids at school, Walter. And um, my home church is going through some difficult patch. Uh, Smyrna Church of Christ, um, just pray for them too. Anything else? Yes, Irving. Well, she needs to get above the weather. <laughs> we'll pray for her. Anything else? All right, let's go to God in prayer. God, you are wonderful and majestic, and we thank you that you can answer prayers and according to your will and not others. God, thank you so much that we can um, show you your own heart and know that there are some things in our life that um, are uncontrollable. Uh, but you can control them. God, that you are in control all the time, and you are sovereign, and you know. God, we thank you that we can uh, just pray to you and know that we can talk to you as a, a brother, as a king, as a savior, as uh, the living God. And God, we thank you that we can come to the table and we know that you're there uh, sitting with us and that we can digest the Bible and know that you're the living water and the bread of life. God, I pray that we will always trust you in, in what you've done and what you've accomplished. And uh, God, that we may not worry and, and take that worry off of our shoulders. God, sometimes we uh, spiral in our, our spiritual life, but God, I pray that we will come out and know that uh, we can repent and come back to you anytime. And God, that you love us uh, despite ourselves. God, I just pray for um, wisdom uh, with Ukraine and Russia and our government and many governments around them, that we may uh, take this with your wisdom and not ours. And God, that you may soften our hearts and that we will have a revival in the whole world. God, I pray for um, Patty and, and uh, Barb and, and those who have cancer. And God, it's just hard to, to hear that. And also my sister-in-law. And uh, God, I pray that anybody who has that, who can, they can survive it. Uh, if not, God, I pray that they have come to you in faith. And uh, that they may uh, seek you and, and don't have to have that trouble anymore. And God, I pray that they will draw close for you and draw close to the family. And uh, God, that you may help the doctors and, and the wisdom and to uh, bring them out of this. I pray for those who have dementia and those who have, are suffering with Alzheimer's. And, and God, we pray for the families. I know it's hard to have that. I had a grandmother that had that, and it's very hard. And uh, God, I pray that you just be with the families and comfort them and those who have it. Um, God, maybe have a Maybe some time they can wake up for just a few moments so they can uh, know that they're loved. And God, I just pray that you will help Ed and Jackie and the things that they're going through. And, and God, we just love that uh, Ed's back here, and I pray that Jackie will come back too. God, I pray for Trinity and, and Siobhan and the things that they're going through with, um, especially Trinity, that she may heal. And uh, God, give the wisdom to the doctors on that. God, I pray for faith and the things that uh, she's going through with unspoken prayer. You know her heart, and you know what the situation is. God, pray for Claudia, and that she may feel better, that she may um, come out of this um, health issue um, yeah, with, with uh, your uh, healing touch. God, pray for Rose and her daughter and the things that she's going through. Pray for Jean Carroll, that you may help her and uh, heal up quickly, and that she may um, see the doctors and the things that are going on. God, pray for Karen and and Walter and, and the things that they're struggling with, I pray that you just be with them, give them uh, wisdom and understanding and um, help them to um, just love you more. God, I pray for Smart Church Christ and that you may um, help them in their situations and the spiritual maturity that they may uh, come back to you and know that um, may they need uh, more wisdom from your word and, and stick to it. God, I pray that you will just help us uh, to bring people to Christ, that we may bring them to your table, that we may know that we are sinners saved by grace. And we're not any uh, more special than anybody else. We just know that we have faith in you and that you are uh, our love and our center of our, our world. And God, I pray that we can bring other people to know that and to trust you. God, thank you for this time that we can sing to you, that we can hear the word, that we can have communion and offering, and that we can do it as a family of God. I pray that you will just help us and keep us Safe in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and pray to sing. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we.
have bass now, so. We do? Yeah, I think so. So we can? I think so. Okay, I know.
So we've been uh, talking about a whole series for the year uh, coming to the table. So just really quick review. Uh, the bread of life, who is that? Jesus. Who is the living water? Jesus. Very good. Uh, our, the fruit is the actions of his people or the actions of God. Um, and then the milk and the meat. I know this looks really weird, but it's fake meat. But... Um, so, spiritual capital, and those are the things that were around the table, and coming to the table in the presence of our enemies. Psalm, 30, uh, Psalm 32 says that we're in the presence of our enemies, that you, that you create a table, and we want our enemies to come. We want everybody to come. Uh, we don't care about the background, what your beliefs are, we want them to come and see Jesus. Um, it's not about me, it's not about you, it's about Jesus. And so, when we, when we say that, how do you really bring people to Christ? Well, first of all, we have to be in Christ ourselves, right? So we, we have to actually be Christians, we have to have be followers of Christ before we can bring other people to Christ. Now, I have seen uh, non-Christians bring other non-Christians, and then both of them become Christians, and it's, it's great, it's awesome. Uh, but typically, the, when you sign up to be a Christian, you're a servant to all, and you are supposed to bring people. Now, of course, the American church, uh, they think preachers should be doing all that. What does the Bible say? Every Christian should be doing that. Now, I am a Christian, so that's what I do. Uh, not because I get paid for it, because I love God. Now, it is nice that I get paid for it, and that's okay, and I really didn't want that, but the board loved me enough, and, that, and that's awesome. But here's the, here's the whole reason. We have to love others before ourselves. And so, when we look at the food in the Bible, um, it is pointing towards a spiritual food, a spiritual table, a spiritual idea. And so, when we have this spiritual mindset, when we have a spiritual worldview, we can look at the Bible and say, hey, there's practical things in the Bible that bring us to the idea that we need to bring people spiritually to the kingdom of God, that we need to bring them to Jesus, because Jesus is the only one saved, not us, not your works, it's Jesus who saves and so as we turn uh, from the table to how do we bring people to, table, to the table. Now the first thing is um, we have to understand, before we even get into this, that we are sinners saved by grace. When you become a Christian, you're a sinner saved by grace. And so you have faith in Jesus. Now, do we still sin? Yes. But hopefully we sin less and less and less. And we know that we can come back and repent and know that we can be forgiven. But we are no better than anybody else. We have to realize that a lot of people become Christians like, well, now I'm a Christian. You're not. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you are a servant now to all. You are the one who serves. 
it's, it's, it's interesting. I've been in five different congregations, and one of the congregations was that somebody sat there all the time. And guess what they said? You can't sit there. That's my seat. Oh, you are supposed to be a servant of all. You take the back seat. You let God glorify you, not yourself. And so when we come to that mindset that we are sinners saved by grace, only by Jesus, then we have this humble attitude to say, well, if I do invite people, if I do invite sinners, they're just as me, as when I came to Christ. Sin is sin. And if we came to Christ and he forgave us, good grief, why do we even point the finger at somebody else? If God has saved us from all the crap that we have in our lives, how dare us to point the finger at any other body else? We should be loving them. We should be bringing them. We should be helping them in their life and being the servant. So when we get into this, don't for one second think that I think we're, that we should be pointing the finger. But how do we bring people to Christ? How do we bring them to the table? Well, first of all, we have to understand that we have to be in the love sinners kind of mood. We have to be in the love others kind of mentality. Remember, Jesus was in the people business. If you don't like people, and if you don't like sinners, then you might be in the wrong category of religion. Because Jesus loved sinners. He even loved the, the religious, legalist people. They tried to change. Some of them did. But those are the ones that he really pointed to to say, look, you, you know what God wants out of you, yet you keep all these things on, on the sinners. And then they complained when he went out with sinners. He was there for the longest. And if we're supposed to be in, in Jesus' image in our communities, then guess what we have to do? We have to love sinners. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 10. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. So talking about a person who's come to Christ. You were once that, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Who's the kingdom of the air? The devil. The devil. Okay? The devil is the kingdom of the air. Actually, the devil and his demons are on earth. They're not in hell. They're tempting you to try to do bad things. They're trying to distract you. So listen to this. You follow the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. You were once that. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh. Remember, the spirit is battling the flesh. The flesh, our humanness, is battling the spiritual life. We do that all the time. Guess who, who wins in the end? I read the end of the book. Anybody read the end of the book? Who wins? God. We're on God's side, and there you go. But we want to bring as many people as we can. So all of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, following the desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. We were deserved, we deserved hell, we deserved to be crushed. We deserved it. The first time you sinned, you should have been dead, period. But, I love, I love the buts in the Bible. That just sounds weird, sorry. Um, the ifs and the therefores. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. In God's eyes, when we are not a Christian, we are dead in our sins. We are we're falling apart. We're broken. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ. Now listen to this. This is awesome. When we become a Christian, where do we get raised up to? Look, look at this. It even says in the scripture, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Where is our spirit right now? It is mingling with Jesus. It is mingling with the heavenly realm. We've started already. This is awesome. In order that in the coming ages he might show his incomparable riches of his grace. You know why we're not dead physically and spiritually? That one word. Grace. Expressed in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. That is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. Well, I say to myself. <laughs> it's Jesus. 
Now, we want to have a repentant heart. We want to come to Christ in faith. But it is Jesus who saves. For we are God's, what does it say? Handiwork. Isn't that awesome? When you become a Christian, when, you, when you've turned your life around from a, a sinner, but sinner saved by grace, you are God's handiwork. That means he made you. That he put you together. He loves you. You have a purpose. And it's wonderful. And who, who created that? Christ Jesus, to do what? Good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. He's prepared for us to work out our salvation here on earth. And how we do that? Serving others. Loving sinners. And what is this, what is this love, this word love? I, I know we have like all these things like, I love my pizza, or I love my car, or I love my wife, or I love my girlfriend, or boyfriend. It's none of those loves. This love is agape love. This word is a Greek word. It says you are supposed to love them with no, with no conditions. doesn't matter what they do, you still love them. That's a godly love. It's hard, isn't it? Yes, you can say yes at this time. It is hard. Because our human side wants to say, I hate you, I don't like you, I'm going to complain about you, you're an idiot, all kinds of stuff. But our spiritual side says, I need to love you like Jesus has loved me. I was a sinner once. I was the one who was broken. And now God loves me. We should never go back to the way we were. We should always remember and saved by grace. Because once we forget that we were saved by grace through Jesus Christ in faith, once we forget that, we become arrogant and legalistic. We need to be humble and tell people the truth in love. And if you don't love sinners, then you're not, you're not acting like Jesus. Jesus loved the sinners. I mean, all the time. He was criticized for it. He was even hung because he hung out with the sinners. The religious people didn't really like that. You've got to love people. The second thing to bring people to Christ is that I love the church. Now, don't love the building. The building is nothing. This building can then be knocked down, and guess where the church is? It's still here. Why? Because what is the church in the Bible? The people. God resides in his people. He doesn't reside in a, in a physical place anymore. Now, he can if he wants, but remember the New Testament is all about spiritual. It's the spiritual kingdom. It's the spiritual one that can't be destroyed. It is the spiritual people. And so look at this. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you has a hymn or a word of instruction or revelation, a tongue or interpretation? Everything must be done so the church may be what? Built up. Now, we're not talking about the physical church. Every time you come to the church building, you don't have a brick in your hand, right? Let's build it up, people. Don't throw the brick. Just, you know. No, what is he talking about? Remember, spiritual caps. What is he talking about? The church is being built up. The people should be built up and encouraged and equipped to go out and do God's work that he's prepared for us in advance. See how this works? So we love sinners. We love the people of the church. Uh, many times in the New Testament, it's called the bride of Christ. Or the church means the people as a whole. It's interesting. When Paul writes his letters, he writes to the church at Philippi. Do you think there was a building there? No. You know why? Because the Romans didn't like them. <laughs> Who is he talking about? The people of Philippi. Or the people of Rome. Romans it was written to the Romans. It wasn't written to the Roman building. It was written to the Roman what? Church. The people. And so we need to love the church. We need to love each other. If we don't love each other, if we backbite, if we gossip about each other, if we hate each other, guess what the world will say? They can't even love themselves. They can't even agree on what, what things are. That's why it just boggles my mind that we can't come together under Jesus' name. We have this church over here, have that church over there, have this church over here, that church over here. Why can't we just come under Jesus? If we were unified under Jesus, we would be more powerful. But no, we got we got to argue about this, we got to argue about that, we got to argue about this. If we're under the truth with love, then the truth will set us free. This is the truth. And so we need to love the church. So we need to love sinners. 
You mean to love ourselves, since we are sinners saved by grace, and to love the church, the people. And then, then we get to hang out with the lost. Look at Luke 19, 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy now. <laughs> tax collector. Mm. Literally, people hated them. I mean, with every fiber of their being. Even their own people hated them. Because they were like in bed with the Romans, and the Romans didn't like Jews, and they didn't like the tax collector of the Jews. So both of them hated them. They're both nations hated these tax collectors. And here's a tax collector doing what? Well, listen. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. I love trees. See him? Climb the tree. Tree houses. We bought a tree house uh, at my uh, house that I grew up at. And um, it was kind of cool because there was no ladder at the bottom. We had to go through the house, through the second window, and go over the ladder and go to our <coughs> house. And we could see everything in Severna because, you know, Delaware is like flat. I mean, you can literally see New Jersey from Delaware. It's weird. But anyway, it's, it's very flat. So I'm a flatlander. I came up here and now I'm a mountain. I don't even plan on this. Why do I call? Anyway, see if I put myself. But here's Zacchaeus climbing a tree. First mention of a, a you know a tree house. It's awesome. But here's Zacchaeus going out of his way to see Jesus. Listen to this. This is awesome. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus. Come down to that immediately. I must stay at your house today. Whoa. Woo! Jesus staying at the house of a what? No. Oh, okay. Who hated the tax collector? Everybody. Man. I thought Jesus was king. I thought Jesus was holy. I thought Jesus was, you know, supposed to be the ruler of Rome. They were thinking physically. Spiritually, Jesus needed to do this. Why? One, for example, because he's hanging out with the lost, the tax collector. And second of all, he was there for the lost. He wasn't there for the healthy, he was there for the sick. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter. Can you just see what they were saying? He's gone to the guest of sinner. Oh, oh my goodness. Even though they were sinners too. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here, and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. You know people in the audience, in the crowd, like, Oh, right, get your paycheck tonight. Because you know some of them really didn't like it. And some of them were probably cheated out. You know, take a little extra in your pocket, nobody will ever know. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is the son of Abraham. Can you just see the people? What? A tax collector? The son of Abraham? For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what? The lost. They were just as lost as Zacchaeus was. They didn't even know it. We need to build relationships with other people. Now, of course God says that you're in the world but not of the world. We should hang out with people who are sinning, but we better not do what they do. Not because we're better, it's because we know spiritually we cannot do that. We have Christ living in us. We have the Holy Spirit. We should be holy in our actions. So when they're begging us to do something sinful, we're just like, no, that's okay. And then maybe they'll ask why, and then you can tell them for the love of Jesus. But if we don't hang out with sinners, or we don't hang out with the lost, how are they ever going to hear? And if they don't hear, then how do they come to Jesus? And if they don't come to Jesus, then how are they going to come and be saved and make it to heaven with us? If you are not hanging out with the lost, start doing it. That's what's going to bring people to Christ, is that you act like Christ in their life. Jesus did it. Why can't we? And the last thing is, Jesus ate with lost people. You know how much, you know what really cool is having a meal together? I mean, it's just a really cool concept. Like, you can invite anybody to your house. Now, uh, we had, uh, what was it? Um, 
corned beef and cabbage. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, I'm a little hungry. But Jesus ate with lost people. We need to bring people to our home. Now, is there wisdom in that? You should have wisdom. You should know who's coming. Okay. But on the other hand, God will protect you. And on the other hand, if they if he doesn't protect you physically and you die, guess where you're going anyway? Right? Now, we don't want to be reckless and invite, like, you know, somebody who we know is going to steal from us. Maybe we'll keep him in one room and then they'll leave afterwards. So we have to be wise who we invite, but I want you to invite people. Maybe people don't even, you don't even know. Maybe you need to eat with them. Maybe you need to have a meal with somebody. Maybe you need to humble yourself and know that, hey, I was once like that. They can come to Christ too. Look at Luke chapter 11, 37 through 41. When Jesus had finished speaking, a Pharisee, who should have known the Bible, who have, should have known the Old Testament, listen to this, a Pharisee invited him to eat with him. So he went in and reclined at the table. So the last one was Zacchaeus at the tax book, and now this is Pharisee, who was supposed to be the religious people at that time. But look at this. This is, this is interesting. But the Pharisee was surprised when he noticed that Jesus did not first wash before the meal. <gasps> then Jesus said to him, Now then, you Pharisee, clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You foolish people. Now I'm not going to say you invite people over to your house saying, You wicked, foolish person. <laughs> okay, that, that was Jesus' job because he's the judge and I'm not. But he knew the heart of the Pharisee just as much as he knew the heart of Zacchaeus. And so if we trust God, we're going to hopefully discern and know what to say at the meal. You foolish people, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? But now as for what is inside you, be generous to the poor and everything will be clean for you. So if we've, we've you know, dressed up for church and we're clean and we have a shower and we, and we come all beautiful and wonderful and handsome and we come to the building and we, and we sit down and we start hearing the, the, the songs and the prayers and the, and the preacher and all those things, but we're ugly inside, is it really going to work that well? As a Christian, we should be in and out living for Christ. Now, there's all kinds of scriptures of Jesus eating with the lost. Luke 14 and 15 through 24 is a parable of the great banquet where they invite they invite uh, the, the Israelites first. This is the interpretation of it. But they invite the Israelites to the table to come to Jesus and they kind of make all these excuses. Well, not really. No, I want to, you know, just we have these other things that we're supposed to do. Okay, fine. Uh, go out and get everybody on the streets. That's the Gentiles. Get everybody that, that's lame or crippled or, or hurt or broken. Invite them in. And then they have this huge party and everybody's having a great time and they're eating at the banquet table. And the Jews are like, wait a minute, we want to be invited too. You were. And you said no. And he just went, he, he says that they went on having the great banquet. Now hopefully... It, you know, salvation came to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. Hopefully Jews will understand that that is, that Jesus is the Messiah. And of course Gentiles need to also. So there's no, neither Jew nor Gentile anymore, there is one under Jesus Christ. And he says in John 15, 13, he says, greater love has no one than this. Anybody know what the rest of that is? To lay down one's life for one's friends. Then he goes on and says what? I call you friends. If Jesus himself can sacrifice himself for his friends, the sinners, then why do we always want to point the finger? So, I'm going to have a little repeat after me. I'm going to say it first, and then you're going to say it. Okay? If you truly believe this. If you don't, don't repeat after me. Maybe we need to you need to come back to God, come back to repentance, that's okay. But just repeat after me if you believe this. Come to the table. I love sinners, even myself. I love the people who are the, are the church. I will hang out with the lost. I will eat with sinners like Jesus did. 
We need to build a relationship with them. We need to build trust. We need to teach them about Jesus through our actions. If we truly believe this and live it, this place would be overfilled with people. And we would gather at the table to come see Jesus. Not me, not the music, not offering, not communion. Those are important. But I want them to see Jesus in us. For those who feel lost or have not accepted Jesus as your way of life, you need to come to him before you bring people to the table. And listen to this, breaking news. Not only God replaces what was lost, he upgrades it. It's awesome because God says, if we don't hate our family, our children, our spouse, even ourselves, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. What does that mean? We need to lose everything, and then he gives us like four times, five times, six times, a thousand times more after that. But we have to lose ourselves first and everything that we love. And then it comes back more. Why? Because we love the one who has loved us first, before we even were born. He upgrades us. He upgrades our love. Our love now is not just the physical love, man, we love this, we love our pizza, we love our car. Now it's upgraded to agape love. Oh, peace. Well, I'm not fighting with anybody today, so I have peace. He upgrades the peace to peace that can't even be understood. That we have so much peace that we're like, oh, okay, let's just go with it. Let's, let's put it in God's hands. See, he upgrades everything that the world teaches to something so much better and so much inside that it just, it should be overflowing. And when it overflows, guess who we share it with? Sinners. We share it with the world. When you come to Jesus in faith, faith in confession, that you confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that you have faith in repentance, that you repent of your sins and says, okay, look, I'm, I'm doing the wrong thing, I need to come to God. That we have faith in immersion into water, which we call baptism, which is a Greek word, which I don't know why we still keep teaching it as a Greek word. We have faith in the days of, of learning about Jesus and bringing people to Christ through faith. And then we get to die, and that's gain. To live as Christ and to die is what? Gain. If you want to talk or look or how to accept the good news, the good news is that Jesus came to this earth. He lived a sinless life. He died for our sins, made it to heaven, rose on the third day, ascended to heaven, and is coming back soon. We don't know what time, what day. If he, if, if he literally said in the Bible, this is the day, what would happen? Everybody would wait till that day to become a Christian. But he doesn't say that. Why? Because we would still keep sinning until that last day, and we're like, okay, no, now I have faith in you. He wants us to be prepared. Just like you're preparing a banquet, just like you're preparing coming uh, to, to eat with sinners, you prepare the food, right? You don't sit there and go, well, we'll just wait till they come. Mm. <laughs> no, I mean, you like prepare for hours for this meal. I always love in, at Thanksgiving. You prepare for hours and hours and days, and then you eat it in what? 15 minutes. Just like when we prepare and build a relationship with Christians, you're there, I mean with non-Christians, with sinners, you're there for maybe years and years and years and years and years. And you build a relationship and they come to Christ and like, <sighs> and you've been a Christian all your life, and you're like, well, do we get the same thing? Yep. But I say, nope. That person came to Jesus. You both get the same thing. Why? Because God is equal and fair. And two minutes flat or seconds, they're with Jesus. I hope you stay faithful. No matter if somebody has sinned all their life at 90 years old and they come to Jesus, that's great. If you've been a Christian from, you know, from your childhood till now, and it's been 60 years, great. Both of you are going to make it there. We need to have faith in Jesus because he's the one who finds the law. If we have the same heart as God, if we have the same love of other people that God has, we will bring people. We will tell them about our faith. We will tell them about Jesus. Because he's the only one that can find them. He's the only one that can save. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your love and mercy. And, and God, that we can bring people to the table. God, that we can say that we love sinners, even ourselves. We love people who are the church. We love to hang out with the lost and to eat 
like Jesus did. God, I pray that we will invite people, that we will bring them to your throne. God, help them to hear the word of truth and to be loved. Not the love that the world preaches, but the love that you have for us, unconditional love. That no matter who walks through those doors, we need to love them. Bring them to Christ. Bring a smile to your face. Let the angels rejoice over one sinner in your kingdom. God, we love you and we thank you. Help us to realize your love for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. At this time, um, offering is a point of order. Oh, yeah, Bible study. If you want to grow deeper in the Word of God, come to Bible study. Or do Bible study at your house. It's awesome to open the Word and start reading yourself. But if you were looking at the book of Hosea, and it, ooh, it's deep stuff. It's my stuff. But because we come together, we look at the Word of God, then we can actually know that offering is just a part of worship. That we're giving of ourselves sacrificially to the mission here. And like I said, we, 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 we help other people. We're actually having the, the meeting today, and one of our topics, every board meeting, is what? Missions. How can we help other people? We have a, a person who's gone on a mission trip. We have people who are, uh, are connected with Ukraine that we might help also. But we, don't, we can't do that. We can't, we can't give to other people if we don't have your heart in the right place. And that is with Jesus. Jesus says, hey, you should be loving others. You should be loving Jesus more than your money. And so he, he establishes that in the New Testament. Now we don't do tithe. Tithe is different. Tithe is in the Old Testament. Tithe uh, com combined with sacrifice and with this kind of tithe and that kind of tithe and 10%. But he does say to give sacrificial in the New Testament. Not of compulsion or guilt or a number but because it's from your heart. And that's why we do that. Also, we have communion. Communion is a really cool uh, part of uh, our church worship service, our service of the assembly. And look at Job. Job chapter 10, verse 12 says, You have granted me life and favor, and your care has preserved my spirit. If Jesus didn't die for us, if he didn't come back from the grave, if he didn't ascend to heaven, we would be pitied among all people. Now, Job didn't know Jesus at this time, but he knew, <laughs> he knew that God was going to grant him this. It wasn't a physical life. It was a what? A spiritual life. A spiritual life in favor with God. And the only way you can do that is through Jesus Christ. God can't be around sin, but he can be around Jesus. And if we have Jesus in our life, he can be around us. And so Jesus had to come as a sinless sacrifice. And that's why we can take this to remember his death, burial, and resurrection. The bread represents his body and the juice represents his blood. And we take it together because we are the bride of Christ. So after I pray, and we'll hear some music. When we hear some music, you can open it at that time because it's really noisy. But so we can focus on what Jesus has in our life. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your love and mercy. Thank you for um, helping us understand why you had to die. And God, that your body and blood were, were a sacrifice for us. God, thank you so much for this time that we can, on the first day that we acknowledge you, and that you are Lord of our lives, and that we can come to you anytime. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs>
Let's stand together. So share this week with somebody. Share your faith. Share about Jesus. My encouragement is for you to share about Jesus. We need to bring people to Christ. Uh, we're going to pray and then uh, I'll let you go. Uh, we do have a meeting downstairs at 1230. If you'd like to join us, see what we're doing. And uh, thank you all for coming. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your love and mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you that you have uh, loved us enough to come to you. And God, I pray that we will share that. Uh, we don't have to be a scholar or a theologian. We just need to know that uh, Jesus has saved us and that other people need you. And then we can grow in relationship with you and know why we came to you and why you've given us so much. And God, that we can share that with others. Uh, God, I pray that we will share it with our actions and our words and our life itself. We just love you and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. What? Bye, beautiful people. We're good?